Hi, it's Keith again from Link Evolve. Um, so what we're going to do now is continue on with our roofer example, and we're going to do the. We're going to calculate what requirements we need to uh, to get this guy ranking. So the first thing we look at are the on-page requirements. So we're going to set up the home page for a couple of the keywords, and then supplementary pages for the other ones. The home page will be optimised for Birmingham roofing contractors roofing companies in Birmingham and roofing repairs Birmingham. We'll then build some extra pages for these terms. We'll have garage roof replacement Birmingham as one page, another page for fault roof in Birmingham and fault roofing costs in Birmingham because they're related terms, and then another page for Birmingham flat roofing and price of flat roofing in Birmingham because they're related as well. I won't go into a massive tutorial about on-page SEO here as it would be a course in itself but I'll show you the basics. So the first thing we need to do are the on-page tags. So keyword in title. So let's say we're doing it for garage roof replacement Birmingham. We would put that keyword in the title. Keyword in description could because that shows up in the search results. So you would have if you're looking for garage roof replacement in Birmingham, please contact us now, call this number, or visit our website, something like that. Um, you need a closely related term in the H1 tag, so garage roofs Birmingham, garage roof repairs Birmingham would be, would be good terms to put in there, and then other related terms in the H2 and H3 tags. You want the keyword in your content, so a good guide is once per 100 words. We aim to have at least 100 words per page, so eight keywords or closely related keywords maximum. Don't over-optimise your keywords in your content, it's no need, not needed anymore. Also, a keyword in the alt tag of images and a related YouTube video is always good to add as well for the extra link juice from YouTube. Okay, so the on page is optimized well and we're ready to build the links. So the next stages are add the business to Google Places for business. You need to request a postcard from the link which is google.com forward slash business. Doing this will help you rank in Google Maps and also allow you to build citations and reviews. The postcard can actually take a couple of weeks to arrive, so in the meantime, just carry on with your link planning. The next one is to set up a Google Plus profile. So these are your social accounts, Google Plus profile and business page, a Facebook business page, a YouTube channel, a LinkedIn account and a Twitter account. Not only are these useful for links, but it also makes the business look more natural and like a real business, which is what it is. A lot of people don't go to this effort, especially if they're trying to scam Google in some way, and Google soon picks up on thin content and, and sites that only have like one page, a keyword page, and they don't have the usual pages on there or links. Okay, so they're the main ones, but you can go further and add Pinterest, Instagram, and many more social profiles if you so wish. Important point, if you're doing this for a client, then set all of these up in their name and business. You don't want to have hundreds of accounts set up for these, as it'd be a nightmare to manage. And it's also against the terms of service of most of these companies anyway. Okay, to recap, we have the website set up and optimised for SEO, the Google Places set up and awaiting verification from Google, and the main social sites set up. The next stage is to build a set of Web2 sites. Details on how to do this are on our FCS Networker section, which Nigel has done, and that's in real detail on how to do that. It's a great piece of uh, tutorial there. Right, so onto Web2 sites. So what we do is wait for these accounts to be indexed, and then you can add content without links. It's safest to add a couple of articles without any links at first, as often these Web2 services will delete any accounts they believe it being just used for link building. So you want to make everything look as natural as possible. Once you've waited a couple of weeks and have content on the Web2 sites and they're indexed, you can then add content with links to your client's site. Again, we go into much more detail in the FCX sec FCS section, but a quick overview. So, add content spun or a folder of articles. The key here is to use high quality content and if you do use spun content then either do it yourself or find a fiber seller who can do this properly for you. Add link sets. You can set up a few different link sets for the project and ensure that you rotate URLs so you're not just building links to the home page. Add images. 
make sure you apply the usual SEO tags, the alt tag, to all of the content is described in the on page overview above. Add videos, related videos from YouTube, add authority links, these will be Wikipedia or related authorities in your niche. For roofing we would use the, something like the Federation of Master Builders for example. Once this is all in place, set the campaign to run and move on to the next step. We use the seller on Fiverr to build high quality profile links with great PR, page rank. These are the only profile links we would send to the main site for absolute safety and the Fiverr details will be enclosed in the uh, worksheets. Okay, so let's recap. Uh, in conclusion, we've analysed the building sector, business sector, that's because we're working roofers in the building sector, analysed the business sector, completed competitive analysis, set up the on-page SEO and mapped out our campaign. Usually all of this takes around four weeks and you can charge a substantial setup fee to your client for all of this work. We tend to charge them a monthly fee and a setup fee usually between between one and a half and two times what the monthly fee is. So if you're going to charge £500 a month, you can charge a £1,000 setup fee because quite a lot of work involved. And if you do it all properly, it, it so helps you in the future. Okay, so slide five. We have a saying that I first heard from a great marketer called Vegas Vince, who unfortunately is dead now. Um, and that is, his saying was, perception is reality. Uh, it's your knowledge that people pay for, not the amount of time you spend working on campaigns. If you were to do all of the uh, work we've mentioned manually, then it would take hundreds of hours to complete, as you can imagine. The client will be happy as they'll see quick results and have faith in your work and knowledge. Never, ever swap your time for money. That is for people who are in a job making other people money, not for us. A quick story to explain this. There's an old story of a boiler maker who was hired to fix a huge steamship boiler system that was not working well. After listening to the engineer's description of the problems and asking a few questions, he went to the boiler room. He looked at the maze of twisting pipes, listened to the thump of the boiler and the hiss of the escaping steam for a few minutes and felt some pipes with his hands. Then he hummed softly to himself, reached into his overalls and took out a small hammer, tapped a bright red valve just once. Immediately, the entire system began working perfectly and the boilermaker went home. When the steamship owner received a bill for $1,000, he became outraged and complained that the boilermaker had only been in the engine room for 15 minutes and requested an itemised bill. So the boilermaker sent him a bill that reads as follows. For tapping the valve, a dollar. For knowing where to tap, $999. Total, $1,000. As I said, it's what you know that counts. See you in the next video.